What's up guys, Fahad here. Welcome back to another Autobot review. This is the review of the Yamaha PG1. You can rent this bike at Auto Exchange Moto and a whole range of other bikes as well. Uh, recently, they have the new bikes, which is the Honda ADV 350, Yamaha R15M V3, and also a whole range of other bikes, including the XADV, the T-Max, don't forget to quote our promo code I love Tambor Orlanders 15% off your rental Okay, once again huge thanks to Auto Exchange Moto for loaning me this bike again for the review Right guys, so before we begin review as usual we want to highlight that 58 0.8% of our regular viewers are not subscribed to this channel as you guys know we've worked so hard on these videos day and night of planning scripting shooting and editing so all I humbly ask you guys is for you guys to subscribe why because this actually triggered the YouTube algorithm to push out all these videos and the channel to a wider audience and now back to the show so here I am back in the city of Medini of course my favorite place to do a bike review, automotive review, and my playground also. And here I have with me is the Yamaha PG1. Okay, so this is Yamaha's answer to the ever popular Honda CT125. Those bikes, of course, they've already been in the market for quite some time, and they are based on the 1970 Honda CT110. I think so. It's an old bike, and Honda brought it back to the modern era, and of course, Yamaha wanted to compete with them on that front so obviously as you can see with this rugged outlook you expect the PG1 to be an off-roader and it actually is um, it's something that you take with you on forest trails dirt tracks a sort of recreational bike if you will Yamaha heavily promoted this machine as an outdoorsy companion on your camping trips and I've seen videos of riders taking the PG1 for a spin uh, they really brought this in the dirt path, off-road and one video even, this Cambodian guy, he was playing around with it at a staircase and he actually went up and down the staircase with the PG-1 <laughs> so that itself says a lot about the Yamaha PG-1 okay, so sitting on the bike the weight of 107 kilograms whew, it's very light of course, this bike is classified as an underbone or in the local terms a cup chai the chassis is uh, similar to a cup chai the mechanical operation is basically the same as a cup chai the gear changing so you press down to shift up the gear and you shift up to shift down the gears and if you were to shift down after gear 4 you go back to neutral and then gear back to gear 1 so it's this semi-automatic kind of gear changing la, and it doesn't come with a clutch there's no right clutch lever only a brake lever on the right <laughs> let's start up is this a key uh, speaking of key for a 2024 bike this bike is very old school I'll describe it as I'm riding la. ignition is turned on it's a nice deep exhaust sound okay shift down Gear 1, off we go Semi-automatic So you have to Close the throttle and then shift up lah It's been a while since I rode this kind of uh, bike Because I rarely rode out my EX5 Recently, my EX5 had to send it to the workshop Because it's been a while since I last rode it <laughs> Okay, so basically city riding Sort of situation Lane splitting, heavy traffic As a wake up chai It's meant to be an easy city commuter So no issues with city riding Of course, this bike is not a fast bike Even the top speed is not as good as most uh, class 2B bikes out there But it gets the job done lah And at the same time, for its price point, for its purpose, its class You, you shouldn't expect much lah And it's the sort of bike where I feel lah it's similar story to the Honda Cup whereby it's this delivery guy sort of bike with something for you to get to point A to point B and that's what the PG1 seeks to compete you know they build this as a trail bike to compete with the Honda CT125 this sort of off-roady cup chais I will call it 
I'm not sure if there's a proper name or class for it There's even one in Malaysia There's this particular bike I forget the name, I forget the model But it's very similar to the Honda CT125 Everything on here it feels really old school From its analog gauge cluster To the drum brakes for the rear wheels No ABS, not much riding technology on this Everything is analog Everything is mechanically spartan in nature So I think Yamaha built this bike To facilitate developing markets lah. They are using this bike for their daily commutes And they want something simple Something they can repair on the spot Where parts are cheap But even the owners themselves They can fix it easily Okay, so handling wise Look at this Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Very easy Comes with Stubby off-roady tyres So definitely it's off-road ready Of course You'd want to bring this off-road And the way that this bike is set up It's also definitely built for off-road like The right height and suspension is slightly higher Than the typical Cup Chai For developing markets Kampong roads Dirt paths No issue lah And even staircases I would think that <coughs> You know in the Americas The PG1 would be similar leaks To the Honda Grom In which Red bike is marketed as a surfer, a beach bike But this one is more of something you bring to the campsite Whew. The brakes I would say they are not really that great lah Compared to other bikes So you really need to beware lah And not only that, it doesn't come with ABS or so So careful not to lock up your brakes as well Launched in December 2023 and based around on the Yamaha Finn underbone, the Yamaha PG-1 is a dual sport underbone. The PG-1's concept is a fusion of retro style design that can be used not only for practical purposes, but also for hobbies. Targeted for trail and off-road riding and a companion during camping trips, the PG-1 is a collaboration with Yamaha Japan and Yamaha Thailand. The PG-1 seeks to compete with Honda's Trial 125. Engine is a 113cc, air-cooled, single-cylinder, four-stroke, two-valve SOHC with electronic fuel injection and a four-speed semi-automatic transmission. So basically, the Yamaha PG-1 is classified as an underbone or in local context, Cup Chai, similar to the Honda Cup, Yamaha Sniper, LC135, Honda RS125, RSX Even the way of operation is similar to a clutchless Cup Chai It's this clutchless semi-automatic You kick down to shift up the gears And you kick up to shift down the gears And it's a 4-speed semi-automatic Basically when you shift down from 4th gear, we go back to neutral And then 1, 2, 3, 4 And then neutral again So there's no need for you to shift out or shift down You can basically shift down all the way <laughs> Also, this is actually a collaboration between Yamaha Thailand and Japan and it's a direct competition with Honda's line of retro Super Cup underbones. Those by itself is inspired from the 1970s Honda CT110 Trail. So, a bit of history and context there about why uh, such a bike exists. Alright guys, so as usual, we're going to start off with the riding position. Okay, so sitting on this bike right now, as you can see, Despite its small size and small frame, I'm actually sitting quite upright and very comfortably. Uh, my arms aren't stretched out. The handlebar is just right for me. I don't suffer for any back aches whatsoever. But my bum does tend to get sore after riding it for quite a while. So I think it's unavoidable due to the riding ergonomics. My legs are bent quite a bit. It's almost as if like, I'm sitting on a chair like that. Um, but it's this uh, standard motorcycle kind of riding position, okay? And with a ride height of 79.5 cm and 165, and as you can see, my feet is fully flat on the ground. Vertically challenged riders, no issues at all, I feel. And with the bike weight of 107 kg, very lightweight and very easy for you to basically stand on a bike like this. Lah. Uh, feels as if I'm uh, sitting on a bicycle actually. So despite it being a 2023 era machine and also a cup chai, I have to say the design wise is very different compared to most cup chais today. Well, usually they try to fit a sporty motorcycle design to it to have a modern and attractive appearance. And some of this you can already see from some of the models that Yamaha and Honda has been coming out. Instead, the PG1 has a mixture of retro and venture look to it. 
from its round halogen headlights giving off a 1970s scrambler style it's back to basics features and retro grade cluster everything on the pg1 feels retro and old school even the placement of its engine and taller ride height provides ample clearance for off-road situations compared to a standard cup chai obviously yamaha got this inspiration from the honda trail 125 for its overall appearance and i would think that with the popularity of such bikes we'll see more manufacturers coming up with trail inspired cups additionally in vietnam there exist several appearance packages to make the pg1 tuned for different purposes namely casual camper and tracker we got front racks higher mounted exhaust metal bash plate higher front fender um, basically different packages come with different accessories and stylings uh. okay guys so i'm next to come to the handlebar handlebar controls and gauge cluster okay so usually for cup chais right they will come with a plastic cladding over here to make it somewhat scooterish by being an off-road adventure inspired kind of machine right the pg1 does not have plastic cladding so it comes with a standard handlebar this is also similar to the honda ct and trail which doesn't have plastic cladding on their handlebar as well personally i prefer this kind of handlebar so easy for you to mount accessories i think riding controls wise is pretty basic pretty straightforward okay so to the left over here horn signal indicators high beam low beam a high beam switch at the front the right over here we got a kill switch starter and surprisingly hazard lights so it is what it is <laughs> okay so i'm next to come to the gauge cluster and it's a full analog with retro styling this is something very rare for a 2024 era bike yeah usually even as budget oriented as this bike is it will come with a minimum a minimum a lcd display even the ct125 uh, is using a lcd display yeah, to somewhat modernize it and i feel that it's a weird decision on yamaha's part on why they did this lah, but it is why it is and also it does pack in a fair amount of information and gauges over here so to the left over here we got the speedometer port the orbiter which is very retro and old school it's been a while since i saw a bike which has this kind of counter kind of uh orbiter, eh? the gear indicator four speed semi-automatic transmission okay one two three four neutral over here to the right we got fuel gauge high beam check engine light and the signal indicators so the signal indicators as cheap as it is uh, despite you using the left or right signal indicator it will just show you the hazards and also when you activate the hazards it will still show you hazards as well uh, no buttons for you to adjust whatsoever no trip one no trip b and it is what it is okay guys so next we come to riding technology and surprisingly the yamaha pg1 does not come with the standard or usual riding tech that most of the bikes in the 2024 era will come with even as a bike as basic as this it feels really analog it feels very retro and the riding technology matches with the aesthetics of the bike as well we got hazard lights surprisingly <laughs> <laughs> even its headlights are halogen headlights uh, it doesn't use the led which is kind of a let down for me pillion seat comes stock with it unlike the honda cup front disc brakes with rear drum brakes chunky and knobbier tires on 16 inch spoke rims so i think the only thing that is modern on this bike is basically the iu unit <laughs> okay guys so horn check for the yamaha pg1 I have to say that for a small bike like this, its horn is very, very loud. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm next to come to colors. And usually for this budget oriented kind of uh, bikes, they usually come in very nice, attractive candy colors, which I like. And I wish most bikes nowadays will have that option uh, for you to choose a wide range of colors from. Uh. So for this particular bike being reviewed right now, it's simply named as blue. We got black and silver, dark green, yellow and silver sand brown and my personal favorite of course orange and silver we come to the price so of course i don't think hong leong brought this into singapore i think it's a pi and looking at carousel the machine price for these bikes is 6300 for orange color for malaysia uh, this bike is not yet available yet in the country but uh, there's a recommended retail price apparently 9498 ringgit the gear changing feels really weird <laughs> <laughs> this is a four speed semi automatic clutchless kind of gear. It's been a while since I, I did this. 
<laughs> Handling is pretty good Okay um, Leans and corners And negotiates bends very well Especially tight spaces The PG1 does really well So that's why I say It's very suited for urban use And food delivery Food delivery riders would really appreciate On how much it feels like a bicycle You know just Riding this thing You get on You get off uh, You park You want to squeeze in between Bikes And traffic to get to your destinations and it feels like we are riding a bicycle I think that goes the same for any cup chai but I'm telling you it's horrible on the highway 80 km per hour that's like the maximum I did try to go up to 90 but you can feel the engine just struggling to get up there screaming and especially if you're going through an incline or uphill right oh man you can feel the bike just bog down and just struggle to get up there up to speed you know and this is the incline road right here going uphill some slight struggle I feel trying to get up there it's not really a bike that screams performance you know it's just a recreational kind of thing lah where once in a while you bring out this bike you bring it to the beach or bring it to the campsite you offer everything for your pickup truck and then you just want to go down to the river short right to the river or you want to respond to an emergency or anything or you want to go somewhere near this bike facilitates that fuel tank is also kind of small 5.1 liter fuel tank with a projected consumption of 1.69 liters per 100 kilometer which is actually fuel saving I must say but because of its small fuel tank it does the JB fuel runs I feel is out of the question nice really not suited just bringing back this bike from Kaki Bukit to my house at Gelang Pata right I've already used like a half of the fuel tank already <laughs> unless maybe expand the tank or something uh, and then maybe can lah uh. with that comes my conclusion on you know who the bike is for once again I said this is a recreational kind of thing it's more suited for riders who want to bring it out once in a while to the campsite to the beach maybe play a bit of off-road uh, it's a lifestyle machine it's similar to the Grom where the Grom is marketed for beach or surfer kind of lifestyle this PG1 similar links to the Honda Trail bikes right but yet I see in Thailand Cambodia Vietnam they make it work riders over there they daily this bike you know given its price point its low price point it's mechanically spartan in nature it meets the needs of these developing markets lah. and over there they just want a basic need, means of transport right so they have a PG1 you know with its retro kind of look which doesn't look like a conventional cup chai it appeals to some people lah. And especially in recent years, you know, the Honda Trail Cup Chais, uh, they are gaining some traction because there's this market of riders that want a bike that you can bring to the jungle trails and all that. And I think that's why Yamaha themselves, they made this PG1 as a competitor to that. Uh. Especially if you ask me, uh, the pickup is quite good. It's quite fast. But the low to mid range, uh, horrible. Not used to shifting down. <laughs> because when you shift down, you have to shift up. <laughs> so it's very weird especially for me everything here feels so basic old school so retro I know for me but for Singapore even the high uh, COE prices for a bike right and this bike itself being so much cheaper than the current COE which is like this bike is like 6000 plus and COE is like what almost 10k right it's not even worth to get such a machine i would get something that is more versatile with more features with the performance and everything maybe as a spare bike ah, i can consider riding the hondas or uh, yamaha i keep missing up <laughs> the yamaha pg1 but there are people you know who buy the honda trails honda cup even because they appreciate the history and the lifestyle that goes along with the bike uh, suspension wise it's pretty decent given that it's supposed to be this, this dirt bike right but you can still feel the road bumps and imperfections uh, quite prominently and during like big heavy humps right the front wheel just hits the fender so there's this sound <laughs> scared me because I thought 
that something hit the undercarriage or something Not to mention it's also an air cool bike I can feel some of the heat on my inner shins right now But it doesn't bother, really bother me that much lah But you can still feel the heat though So we're gonna get into the highway now And as I've said, this bike doesn't do too well in the highway No windshield, full force to the wind in front of you On top of that you're probably the slowest thing on the highway right now Be sure to keep left at all times uh. Given it's already budget price point This is what you get lah You pay for peanuts, you get peanuts right? Let me try to go beyond that uh. You're still stuck at 80 <laughs> I did try up to 90 yesterday when I brought home the bike But that is when there's not much wind resistance in front of me That's why I managed to pull it up to 90 but other than that, beyond that, you cannot go that far lah Maybe you can modify it Because I've seen car chai in Malaysia 135cc 110cc They can beat a class 2 bike for some reason Maybe they modified Or they did something to their bikes Perhaps you can do something similar With the PG1 lah But that's not why You get a PG1 in the first place, right? To go fast Well, keeping left on the highway now <laughs> The rest of the highway just overtakes me even a Honda Wave can probably beat me right now Hopefully I don't irritate the motorist too much eh? <laughs> Now I would love to try out off-roading with it But it's not my bike So we are gonna keep the bike clean And well maintained And I don't want to drop the bike or anything and damage it Because it's not my bike, it's a rental Once again, huge thanks to Auto Exchange for loaning me this bike for the review eh? They've recently come out with new bikes ADV350, Yamaha R15M, Yamaha R15 V3 So if you want to test out or rent those bikes, you can do so from them lah Okay guys, so I've had like 5 days with the Yamaha PG1 And overall, if you ask me, it's a comfortable class 2B bike Best for urban use, food delivery Occasionally you can take it off-road and go for camping Given that this is the bike's actual purpose It's not a fast bike, nothing really exciting, no Am I quite looking forward to riding one? Uh, it's somewhat similar to the Grom or the MSX in, in certain ways So depending on how you look at the PG1 for developing markets They may see this bike as a budget-friendly option to get from point A to point B and also, you know, it's mechanically spartan in nature So any village mechanic or even the owner himself or herself can fix this bike Without too much hassle or trouble lah. Developing markets, this bike may be treated as a toy lah, or a spare bike Something that you probably have fun in the off-roads or the jungle trails And even the beach or for that camping trip I also think that given that it's a 2B, right? It's very suitable for new riders Particularly riders who are vertically challenged and they want something easy, something simple Something that is point A to point B And also, you know, maybe uh, lady riders This bike weighing at 107 kg is kind of light So it will be easy for them to handle And with Hari Raya coming up, you can rent this bike at Auto Exchange Moto And a whole range of other bikes as well Okay, uh, recently they have the new bikes which is the Honda ADV 350 Yamaha R15M V3 and also a whole range of other bikes including the XADV, the T-Max Don't forget to quote our promo code I love Tambor Orlanders 15% off your rental Okay, once again huge thanks to Auto Exchange Moto for loaning me this bike again for the review And that's it for the vlog, we'll see you guys in the next one